For over 350 years, Francophones in Ontario have strived to live, work, and play in French. They've built schools, churches, and cultural centers. They've also contributed to making Ontario into what it is today. In 1610, Etienne Brulé, a scout for the explorer Samuel de Champlain, became the first European to set foot in Ontario. Thousands followed from France and settled alongside the native population. In later years, they came to Ontario from Quebec, New Brunswick, and from various French-speaking countries. They chose to stay. They brought with them their hopes and dreams, their songs, and their language. They chose to make Ontario their home. Living in a province where English is the language of the majority is a reality for Franco-Ontarians. In certain areas, access to essential French language services remains very limited. The challenge Francophones face to keep their language and culture is not an easy one. Yeah, two toes uh, that were caught at first. We're going to do a test where we take a look inside your lungs and see if we can find out why you have this spot on your x-ray. Bon, lundi prochain, on va vous faire un test. D'accord? On va regarder dans vos poumons. Et puis, on va aller regarder l'endroit où vous avez ces petites bosses-là. On va vous faire un test là-dessus pour voir ce que c'est. Est-ce que vous comprenez? Est-ce que vous comprenez? Oui, oui, oui. Ah, OK. After moving here, my son started school in September. At school, they thought Max had a learning disability. They told me we should see a doctor. The real problem was he couldn't speak English. That's when I started to work in French language classes. Quant à la disponibilité, bien, a commencé au... At the undergraduate level in Ontario universities, not all programs are available in French. Statistics show that there are very few francophones studying at the graduate level. French language programs are almost non-existent at the graduate and postgraduate levels. Here's a barbecue roast. Yes, but it's in English. I can't read that. This gymnasium is the main meeting place for francophones. It's been used by educational TV, the dancers and singers of Les Troubadours, the French Club, 
and serves for religious activities. This is where francophones have been gathering for the past two years, which is as long as we've had this school. C'est la musique. Oui, Peter. Quelle est la profession d'Anthony Newman? C'est un musicien. Quels sont les deux isotopes de l'hydrogène? François? L'hélium, puis... Non, droit de réplique à London. L'hélium et le tritium. Bravo. Qu'est-ce que du pinard? Du vin? Du vin, oui. For 100,000 young francophones in Ontario, going to a French-language school is a daily reality. These schools are a reflection of the community's cultural diversity. Preparing for the future means getting the skills and knowledge needed to compete in the world of work. Bon, voilà ce qu'il y en est pour le chapitre au niveau géographique. On va regarder un petit peu le contenu. Ok, moi tout. Ok, let's go. The French-speaking population of Ontario contributes to the economy of this province. Francophones can be found at every level of the corporate ladder, working in their own businesses or for established companies. Businessmen used to sit in the back, reading their newspapers without talking. Now, people like to sit up front, to listen to the radio, to know what's happening with the Blue Jays. In some regions of the province, francophone entrepreneurs play a key role in the local economy and are major employers. We've made good profits with the sawmill compared to previous years because we found new markets for our wood shavings. We had expected to do well with both the sawmill and pulp. Francophones have also established a strong network of case populaires, which are similar to credit unions, and which can be found in many Ontario communities. In this day and age, communications play a vital role in bringing people closer together. To meet that challenge, Francophones have established television stations, radio and community newspapers, 
accessible to everybody. Les membres de la commission de planification devront donc venir sur les lieux analyser le tout dans quelques semaines. Claude Gagnon, à Hearst. Many who live in French in Ontario are volunteers for francophone organizations involved in education, politics, the arts, and the economy. There are more than 3,000 clubs and associations operating at the provincial, regional, and local levels. Taking part in these activities gives Franco-Ontarians an opportunity to work for their community. offer a vivid expression of Franco-Ontarian culture. Ontario has hundreds of French-speaking artists, painters, and singers. Cultural centers, theaters, and art galleries can be found in many areas where francophones live. Many of us see French in Ontario as a daily reality. For Ontario's half million francophones, living in French is a fact of life. Mon nom est Stephen et j'ai 8 ans. Je m'appelle Pauline et j'ai 8 ans. Je m'appelle Tony et j'ai 12 ans. Je m'appelle Méliane et j'ai 9 ans. Moi, j'ai pas de napperon. Tu l'as sorti, je sais. Oui. Peux-tu manger tout ça? Oui. Oui. Ton jus? Oui. 